Hey there, my YouTube family. So in one of my most recent videos, somebody commented that I should talk about tattoos and warn people against disfiguring their body. And this comment really stood out to me. And the reason why is because there's a deeper underlying message. It's not just about tattoos. It's about a life of consecration. And my mind has changed on getting tattoos uh, drastically in just one year, where about a year ago, I would tell you it's no big deal. And now I would tell you to prayerfully consider if it's worth it, because I've just changed, I've transformed. And that's all, all because of God. It is by his power alone. And I love making videos that contradict my old self because it's a testimony to what happens when you're following Jesus, when you're growing in your knowledge of him. So my intention with this video is not to condemn anybody or make anyone feel judged that is considering tattoos or who has them, who loves them. I get it. I mean, I have about 16 tattoos and they're beautiful pieces of artwork. I do not look in the mirror and go, ugh, I wish I never got those. Each one represents a period of time in my life that was important and memorable. But I can honestly say I'm good on it. I don't desire it anymore. And it's because there's been a constant growth of desiring more of God and less of the world. And yeah, let me stop right there. Uh, Juju B wants to be in the video, apparently. So I'm going to read to you Romans 12. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. So in light of everything that God has done for us, that what he gave up, his only son suffered and bled for us. In light of that, give your bodies to God. Give all of yourself to him. This is truly the way to worship him. See, I always thought worship was singing songs and lifting your hands at church, but that's, that's praise. And even someone who's not born again can do that and sing along. But to truly worship God we give to him what we love most. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by what? By changing the way you think. And that is what happened to me. The way I think about tattoos, the way I think about what is real beauty has all changed, it's all transformed. And it says to let God. So there's something we must do. We must allow it and be in submission to him, reading his word, spending time with him in prayer, hearing what he wants to say and reveal to us through his word. So I used to love tattoos. I used to love makeup jewelry. And I'm not saying these things are sinful. I'm not trying to make anyone feel bad here. But being overly concerned with appearance and not so concerned with inner beauty is a problem. And if we're truly following what God wants, we're not going to be so concerned with those things. Like, I used to be very concerned about aging and having the latest skin cream. And um, is there any cellulite? I got to get cream for that. And it's just like so much concern that I exhausted myself over, over things that don't really matter. Now, hear me out. I'm not going to stop wearing deodorant. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm still going to present myself in a manner that shows I care, but I care more about inner beauty now. And the more we come to know God through reading and praying and just 
letting the spirit lead our lives, the more we see that the way God created things in their original state are far more beautiful than when man messes with it. So with that said, Nanny, if you're listening, you're gonna love this. I would be way more beautiful without all those tattoos. And I don't regret them, but I used to, the tattoos validated something about my identity. It was part of my identity. And I was so proud of them. And I love when people would come up to me and compliment them and this, that, the other thing. I don't care anymore. <laughs> I don't care. Um, listen, will I throw on a dress for my husband? Absolutely. Will I get dressed up for an occasion? Sure, but tastefully. So I just, you know what it is? My motive behind everything has shifted to does this honor God or does this amplify myself and that's what needs to be corrected in us over and over again god is still working on me in many ways like this he always will be but uh this is a huge thing for me because if you are watching this and you know me throughout the course of my life i have been obsessed with tattoos but i don't care anymore <laughs> so uh, da, 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 something I ask myself now all the time. Is this choice propelling me towards the calling that God has put upon my life? Because if I'm to take my calling seriously, then I'm going to really carefully choose how I appear, what I listen to, look at, eat, spend time with. Well, every little decision in my life has to be really weighed out. Like, I, I have to take it seriously. I have to be clear-minded about it. I can't just act thoughtlessly. So, yeah, if you're considering um, a tattoo, be prayerful about it. Think about your motive behind it. It's a permanent decision for the most part. I mean, except for a laser tattoo removal, which I've had before, and it, it hurt, hurt, hurts. But uh, now I'm gonna, add, I'm gonna piggyback on this because it's not just about tattoos. We have to come full circle here, if we're gonna be honest. What does my clothing say about me? What does my appearance say about me? What does my diet say about me? We have to question all of these things. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. Everything we do with our body is an opportunity to honor him or dishonor him. Now, take it a step further. Look at our material life. What does our lifestyle say about us? Listen, I'm all for enjoying life and the fruits of your labor. I used to want to have a fancy sports car. <laughs> um, I don't care to have one anymore because I think to myself, what does that say about me? I'm not trying to make anyone feel bad. This is just me. What I'm, what I'm reflecting on based off of what I'm reading in the Bible Philippians 1.27 says, Above all, you must live as citizens of heaven, conducting yourselves in a manner worthy of the good news about Christ. My cat just scratched me. <laughs> um, so if I'm going to do something, I want to make sure that I can do it while sharing the gospel and not look like a hypocrite. You know what I'm saying? I don't care what people think about me. I really don't. <laughs> but I care about what this says because I want to honor God. It all comes back to the gospel. Everything comes full circle to the gospel and representing Jesus, representing his message. If it doesn't look like the gospel, if it doesn't look like Jesus, then we have to seriously question if it's worth it, if it really belongs in our life. 
uh, because it could be a beautiful opportunity to say, hey, Lord, I would really like this, but I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to deny myself of it because it doesn't propel me towards holiness. It doesn't line up with what your word says. That's beautiful. So it's not just what we wear. It's not just what we look like, like our possessions um, as representatives. It's the whole spectrum of ourself being given over for God, to God for his glory. Romans 6, 13. Give yourselves completely to God, for you were dead, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. So we are given endless opportunities to use our body as an instrument to do what is right, to glorify God in some unique way. Every single day we're given that opportunity. We are to be slaves to righteous living. And uh, it's not easy, but we do it through the power of God. We must rely on him to do these things, to grow in holiness. So talking about uh, shows I used to like watching, it's not worth it to me anymore. Music I used to love, music I used to love listening to. I don't know if I wanna fill my mind with those lyrics. Um, the people you spend time with, the things that they're saying, like everything to do with the body. I'm sharing all these verses about giving our body to God because it it's about the outer and the inner. It's everything that we have to submit to God. And we should want to, in light of all he's done for us. 2 Corinthians 7, 1. Because we have these promises, dear friends, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that can defile our body or spirit and let us work toward complete holiness because we fear God. It's the same message over and over again. It's our response to God for what he's done. So I think it's pretty clear in the Bible that it's all or nothing. Just look at the end of Luke 14. Jesus says, count the cost. It's a life of complete submission to him. That's what it means to be consecrated, to follow after him. And if you're not being pulled towards the things of God, you're going to get pulled towards the things of this world. So I will end it with one more verse, 2 Timothy 2.21. If you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. That's what I want. I want to be a special utensil. I want to be ready for the master to use me for every good work. See, I'm okay denying the things I used to enjoy that don't align with what God wants for me. I'm okay denying that because he is faithful and replacing it with something so much better. So if there's anything you're holding on to that you know isn't good for you, that you know isn't conducive to your growth in Christ, this is your sign, this is your message right now, it's time to let it go. God has something better. And something that a preacher once said that always stands out to me, 99% obedience is 100% disobedience. So it's up to you. This life is, you're either going to be distracted by the things of this world, which are going to mean nothing in the afterlife or possibly work against you. Or we can make the most of every opportunity and live a life that is worthy of our calling and, and invest our time into the things of God, into growing and studying the Bible and learning how to explain it properly, learning how to exegete the scripture so we don't take things out of context. We can invest in godly relationships and sharpen each other and encourage each other, pray for each other. We can focus time on, Lord, how can I serve in my community? How can I share the gospel in a way that is 
creative, that I can get through to a, sp a specific crowd. There are so many ways we can use our time to glorify God. With all of this said, I just want to say one thing here. Everything needs to be done in love. You cannot grow in holiness and wear that as a badge to flaunt at others because then you're a Pharisee and you've missed the whole message of the Bible. <laughs> so let love be your highest goal. Let everything you do be done in love. That's how I want to end this because there's a fine balance between becoming more like Jesus and also displaying the humility he had coupled with the power that he had. So just be prayerful and mindful because you don't need to tell people about your convictions. That's not how you lead people to Christ by saying, I don't have tattoos because I'm a Christian. No, that's self-righteous. If someone asks you and says, hey, how come you don't do this? Or how come you never go out with uh, the guys over there? You can just keep it simple and, you know, whatever the Holy Spirit gives you to say. But it's not something we should lead with. It's not um, an attractive thing to, to flaunt your convictions, if that makes any sense. So we lead with love and we're an example not to be like the world, but to be more like Jesus. And uh, if this video helped you or inspired you in any way, or if anything stood out, please let me know in the comments below. Also, if you need prayer for anything, put it in the comments because as everyone sees that prayer request, we will all pray for you collectively. And I just think it's a beautiful thing to do that for one another. So uh, yeah, let's end this with a prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that we can come together on the internet from all over the world and glorify you and share how you have changed us, how you have transformed us by your mighty power. Lord, point out anything in us that needs to go. In Jesus' name, Lord, give us the power to let go of it and to become more like you, less like this world. Lord, point out our motives Correct us where we need correction. We are submitted to your will and we know your way is so much better than ours. We thank you that we can come together. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth and your love and your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for watching and uh, like this video. Subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you.